Hey there, good evening. Thank you for staying up with us. It is the Fox 6 Sports Blitz, and your eyes do not deceive you. No Brandon Cruz, no Lily Zhao, but in their stead, Bill Schmidt, 97-3 the game. Happy to have him in here tonight. One guy to replace two. We're counting on you, Bill. It's oh, going to be good. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tim. Frankly, it feels like 97-3 the bench when I get the call, but I appreciate it. Thanks for having me tonight. <laughs> we're going to have fun tonight. Here's some of what we're going to be talking about on our starting lineup. Sure, it's the preseason, but we get our first look at the Bucks dynamic duo, Giannis Santacumpo and Damian Lillard. Brewers dealt a blow for 2024 way before they even get going next spring. A former Packer makes us say what? Both the Packers and Badgers look for answers following losses, and we build some Legos with our high school hotshot. I mean, I've been on the floor with him a, a decent amount, you know, over the last week and a half, two weeks. Uh, so I feel comfortable. You know, I played for Terry Stotts my first nine years in the league. And a lot of what we, we do offensively is what I did with him for nine years. So it's been pretty simple, you know, as far as that adjustment. Um, I think my game complements the guys really well so it's been seamless it hasn't been hard at all and I think now it's just a matter of being able to play against other teams and get used to each other and how we gonna operate out there but it's been simple quite simply that is Damian Lillard makes his debut for the Bucks tonight preseason NBA action he's referencing Terry Stotts who is now a Bucks assistant coach former Bucks head coach uh, he's gonna have a lot to do with the Bucks offense this year under new head coach Adrian Griffin so we set all up as the backstory and we finally get to see Lillard tonight it's about time, and all the talking is going to happen on the floor, and the production is going to speak for itself. But, Tim, when you watch Damian Lillard and how he's always played in the NBA, he's needed somebody like Giannis, somebody who is going to pull a defense on out and then be able to take advantage on the offensive end. Now, on the defensive end, it's going to be a little bit of a different style for the Bucks. But whenever you have 34, match that with zero, it's going to be a good concoction for Milwaukee. And no question, Giannis, he just plays hard all the time. That's his uh, that's yeah. his DNA, no doubt about it. And Lillard has had that reputation as well. So that's why I, I was interested to see them in game action. Sure, it's preseason, but I was interested to see that aspect of it because they don't. I don't think either of them really knows how to turn it off. No, and I don't think either of them has had a player of this caliber to compete with. Right? They've had really good role players, but Damian Lillard has had to be an overachiever, he mentioned in his opening press conference. Now the expectations are going to be heightened because their talent is just that high. And his ability to shoot from the outside, we've been wanting somebody to be able to keep Giannis down low, allows Zero to shoot those threes and big fella get down near the block. And when you say outside, he can go way outside. Uh, we go back outside the uh, Pfizer 4 when they had the rally to welcome Damian Lillard to town. This is a different type of acquisition. I, I don't think there's any other way to slice it. It, it really is. And, and you have to give something to get something. Uh, obviously, Drew Holiday is going to be missed. He, he's a fantastic player and was an upstanding member of the community. Mm -hmm. But what Damian Lillard brings you on the floor it is something that, you know, Fans of a certain day are going to remember Oscar Robertson coming on in here. That's the kind of player you're talking about, a top 15 player in the league. And he was voted by his peers and by people that cover the league for a long time, one of the 75 best players of all time in the National Basketball Association. Shows the kind of class he has. And he's also been, personality-wise, Tim, I think the perfect addition for this club. Hey, you know, Drew Holiday was such a great teammate, no question about it, and, and the one year he didn't win the teammate award in the NBA, Damian Lillard did. So uh, they're, they're replacing with some character there, no doubt about it. Talking about Lillard, talking about Giannis, Chris Middleton doesn't play tonight, uh, but to me, you still need Middleton, you need Lopez, you need a lot of guys for this Bucks team to achieve what they're talking about. Absolutely. All right, that's what's going on with the guys coming up this winter. What about the boys this summer? I think that they're they're all very valuable players to, to our franchise. Uh, we recognize that that this would be the last year of control for 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 the franchise, uh, but at the same time, we know how valuable they are to us for sure. Matt Arnold, they're talking about uh, key players on the Brewers roster: Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, Willie Adamas. Those guys all going into their contract year, and certainly in different spots as they approach that. Uh, let's start with Woodruff. He was mm -hmm. obviously in the news this week, undergoing surgery on his shoulder, and he's going to be out probably all for 2024. You, you kind of have to project it that way. How devastating is that for him? Let's talk about it for him because we know for the Brewers it's a loss, but what about for Brandon Woodruff? And Tim, it's one of the reasons why I like you and, and I've liked this show for a long time. You start with the personal side of it. It is personal for Brandon. He, he hasn't had to suffer one of these massive setbacks quite in his professional career. He's had a couple of stints on the IL, but when you're talking about missing an entire year, 
after dealing with that same injury this year, rehabbing throughout, and then having to go and get it taken care of, the timeline makes you think maybe there was a thought back in May when the injury first flared up to go and get this procedure done, but you feel terrible for him. It's such a massive moment in his career, one year away from free agency, and he's been so good for this organization. You, you really hurt for Brandon as a person because this is a business, and, and that money is probably not going to be able to come back like what it would have been in 24 before this. Well, that's what you're talking about. Brandon has been a team guy all the way, but these players are also individual contractors as yes. well, and their their livelihood is at stake. And and you know, you certainly you saw the emotion, heard the emotion in Brandon Wooder's voice right before the playoffs when he talked about his uh, immediate future. Corbin Burns is probably affected by this as well. Mm-hmm. Big time. Well, and. and- Frankly, many people were anticipating Burns was going to be gone Mm -hmm. at the end of this season, and at some point you'd work out a deal. Now maybe this makes him a little bit more Josh Hader-esque, where he's traded at the deadline next year, and the Brewers go and dip their toe into the water. Because you bring all three of these guys into a contract year, Tim, that's about as quote-unquote all-in as fans can ask the team (laughs) to be. But then... See where the division lays, Mm -hmm. how the vibe of the team is, and what, frankly, what the league looks like. Because you won't be the only team that has to deal with injuries. Maybe it forces the Brewers' hand to be a little more aggressive, keeping Corbin Burns at least for the first couple of months, and then make a decision later on in 24. And on Willie Adamas, we, we shall see. You have Bryce Turing, who can play shortstop. He's nowhere near the offensive player that Adamas can be, so monitor that situation for sure. To me, the overarching story, though, is Craig Council. What do you think is going to happen with the manager? <sighs> If I had that answer, Tim, I might be making a lot more money. <laughs> I, I would, I'll be honest with you. I think Craig is going to take some time. I think he's going to take a couple more weeks and let himself soak in what this moment was. How impressive this run has been. He spoke about it after 2018 when they clinched a playoff spot to us and said, I know what baseball in Milwaukee means. The nursing homes that people are listening to the game on, the back decks that people are watching the game on. That means something to me. It's meant something to him to be this successful. But I think in the back of his mind, baseball-wise, competitive-wise, sure would be fun to see if I could do this with $300 million instead of $100 million at my disposal. But I do believe Craig wants to take some time before making a decision that really impacts how I think people will remember him in this town. And good or bad, they will be deciding on how this goes. And in team sports, you don't hold the cards all that often. Craig Council holds the cards in this situation. And that's definitely part of the whole process as well. As the baseball season comes to a close, hockey just getting started. The Admirals get it going in fine fashion Saturday night, knocking off the Wolves on the road 2-1 in overtime. It's Spencer Stasny early in the extra session. This guy's Mr. Dramatic. 48 seconds in, he's got the game winner. The Ads play their home opener this coming Saturday against the Stodge. Where we're back with more Blitz in a moment. Overtime. I was telling everybody, go home. Man, I, mean, I was like, go home, man. Why y'all still here? That's a good question. I mean, give me a little, like, prep time for a question <laughs> like that. It's a little cold for butterflies to be out right now. Okay. Yeah. It just ruined my night. It was good. I wish I could have been able to send him, send him off with a few more plays um, made, but at the end of the day, we beat them. Not, nobody can make up this crazy narrative and talk about how I shouldn't have left and all of this stuff. You know that that was getting ready to come if we didn't win it. So glad to glad to you know get that win over them today. And um, you know we just want to beat everybody. But you know today was definitely a little bit more sweet. Yeah, he definitely noticed that. I was talking with Devante there in the locker room. Nice to catch up with him as well. Still has such fond memories of his time on the Fox 6 Sports Blitz, of course, and with uh, the Green Bay Packers. And, uh, boy, he took a shot on the field today. So he's a tough, tough guy for sure. Uh, I was in Vegas. You were in Vegas. The Packers were in Vegas. Their offense really wasn't in Vegas. Mm -mm. Uh, What is going on there, Bill? I mean, it wasn't just one game here. This is a problem. Yeah, it has been, and the the growing pains that we anticipated would come from this Packers offense have now seeped into like three or four weeks, and what a different conversation we'd be having on this bye week if it wasn't for that dramatic comeback in the fourth quarter against the Saints Mm -hmm. in the home opener. They have not been able to find a consistent rhythm once Aaron Jones checked out, and with Aaron Jones being sporadically inserted and then taken right back out of the game plan, I do believe that hurt them going into Las Vegas. I think they were believing he was going to be able to go, and then on that Saturday, a little bite in the hamstring again. 
sits on out. They're really missing his explosive plays. And let's be honest, Tim, they're missing the first first down. For their Good offense point. to get into some rhythm, you got to get a first first down, start a drive moving, and then be able to get a defense on their heels and set some things up for a creative play caller like Matt LaFleur to start taking advantage there. Aaron Jones, obviously the biggest playmaker on the offense. We're looking at uh, Jordan Love's struggles there through five games. There have been some higher points for Jordan Love, though, too. Now, I don't know that he's really been a playmaker. He mm -hmm. did lead them to that win over the Saints. I think credit is due there. Uh, I'm not sure he's a game manager, but there have been. Are you okay with the process and the uh, maybe the potential he's showing? I've still been really impressed with what I've seen from Jordan. The poise is one thing that you only can see once – regular season games start being played and, and the confidence that he seems to exude throughout the entire game whether they're down by 10 up by 10 mm -hmm. in the midst of a dramatic comeback or uh, giving away a lead like they were doing in Atlanta I think that part has been good the consistency in the accuracy that I think we want to see over the next couple of weeks start to improve still young still early but now defenses are adjusting and scheming up towards him a little bit. More. He's unflappable. Say what you want about that. Some people would like to see more fire. Other people say they're, they're happy with the fact that he doesn't get rattled in situations. You know, he'll go he'll go to the helmet. He wants to hear what's coming in. He'll get the next play going. The call's coming in from the offensive coaches. And Matt LaFleur is, I think, a little bit on the spot here as we get into this middle stretch of the season. Uh, wh wh what do you anticipate? Will we see big changes overall, like in the mentality or what we're seeing from the Packers, or slow and steady? I think a lot of what we're, we've been seeing from a baseline standpoint, right? They want to pass the ball. I still believe Matt LaFleur wants to throw the ball, played quarterback in college, so he's going to try and push the football down the field. They're not going to be able to necessarily lean on the run game until it starts having some more success. I do expect them, though, Tim, especially coming up next week against a very, very poor Broncos defense, try to establish a little bit of play action off of that run game and allow A.J. Dillon and a young offensive line that's quite beat up to get their feet up underneath them a little bit, run to set up some passing, then being able to take advantage of a pretty porous secondary. You see the standings there, and I think for now with the Packers, standings are kind of out the window. It's You need to just kind of make internal progress with this football team. Mm -hmm. The Badgers are sort of in the same boat. They've slipped out of maybe relevance in the Big Ten West because of what happened on Saturday at Camp Randall Stadium. Uh, and their offense disappeared as well. Didn't even score a touchdown, Bill. No, they stayed on Regent Street. <laughs> they, they were having a good time throughout it. Uh, it was a game where you lose your starting quarterback. You expect there to be a difficult drop-off. However, the hype all offseason long with the volume of players coming in on the offensive side I think may have changed where our expectations went oh, to. Sure. That's an Iowa team that is priding themselves on defense, special teams, and possession of the football. And Luke Fickle said it. They beat him in all three phases yesterday, especially that defense just continuing to bottle up the run game. And I think we all have been around enough sports to say you shouldn't uh, judge a book by its cover, but Deacon Hill doesn't look like he ought to beat anybody. I mean, quarterback for, I, I mean, he looks like he's 50 years old. Body type out there. <laughs> yeah, he looks like we would have seen him at the corner tavern before the game. <laughs> uh, 37 yards passing, and he throws four passing pass attempts in the second half. All in the first two possessions, Kirk Ferentz said, hey, man, why don't you let us take care of this one for you? <laughs> and they won the game, so credit goes to <laughs> Iowa there. Out. So six games left for the Badgers, though. What are they playing for now? Well, they're playing to get better. Uh, improvement is a massive part of what Luke Fickle and this operation need to see throughout these next couple of games. The Big Ten West is not completely out of the mm -hmm. realm of possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that Iowa team could very well lose to Nebraska their last weekend of the year when uh, Wisconsin is in Minnesota taking on the Golden Gophers. You win out, they take that L, you could potentially be finding yourself still in, still in Indianapolis. But they're going to have to figure out what they do really well and watch some more youth start forcing its way into the lineup. And they don't look like they'll win out based on what they showed yesterday, though. They have to have a different uh, yeah, that's, approach that's for sure. Speaking of Badgers, how about the basketball team getting going? Got an interesting team to watch there, too. A lot of newcomers this year. They had the red-white scrimmage tonight, the white with a big win there. Uh, we're coming back to more high school hot shot and more on the Fox 6 Sports you're locked in late night in Fox 6 Sports Blitz. Like many kids, he learned to tinker with Legos from his dad, but it was a high school robotics club visit in third grade that changed everything for him. 
Here's this week's Fox 6 High School Hot Shot. Hey, my name's Owen Hemling. I'm a sophomore at Beaverdam High School. And I play soccer. A big thing about me is I like running. Other than soccer, I do track and cross country. And soccer is just, you're constantly moving, you're constantly adapting, and you're constantly adjusting to play, and there's never like a dull moment. I'm in the band. I play trombone. I played the piano when I was younger and the viola. And then the trombone is the one that has uh, stuck with me the, the longest. I take a lot of uh, AP classes and then I'm part of the FFA, I'm one of the officers there. We have animals in our building that kids in agriculture classes and in the FFA can interact with, learn about, and take care of. I come from an agricultural background. My dad and my grandparents, my great grandpa, all of them were uh, officers, presidents of our FFA. I personally raised chickens, a strain of Rhode Island Red, and for the past two or three years now, I've won state awards. Yeah, so every year at our county fair, I exhibit a uh, mechanical project, an uh, engineering project. I build a robot. This year, I won a special merit on it, a blue ribbon. Uh, there's a lot of fancy words that I could use for it, but there's a physical chain that drives the transmission and changes how the robot moves around. Program it, I have these little pegs in here, and so you put the pegs inside of these chains, and based on where you place them, it'll change the time at which the transmission changes from forward to reverse or neutral. There's nothing controlling this robot other than itself. There's no uh, computer, no code. I don't have a remote control driving this around, but I can control where it goes based on how I build it, essentially. Legos were kind of a, a thing ever since I could like, I was old enough to have Legos without choking on them. I just loved them. I do consider going into a field of engineering robotics. I'm really grateful that I have this thing that I'm, I'm passionate about that I can turn into a career. My name is Owen Hemling from Beaverdam High School and I won a special merit for my Lego robot at the Dodge County Fair. And I'm this week's Fox 6 High School Hotshot. All right. Oh, an impressive young man for sure, making the most of his high school experience, no doubt about it. He and the robotics team have since gone back to that third grade class to share their love for Lego robotics. His passion helps him see potential real-world applications towards robotic agricultural machinery. Good stuff. Playoff football brackets revealed yesterday. Here's a look at the high school blitz play of the week this past week. Eric Kennedy, multi-sports standout down there for Kenosha St. Joe's. He's a locked-on focused football player in this case. Matt Rizzo and the guys doing it down there. Eric Kinnis here, play of the week. Here's what we will be uh, looking at for you. Level one of the WIA playoffs, our game of the week. Division four, Martin Luther visiting Catholic Memorial. Various other games there. You see the helmets on the board, and you'll see the highlights coming up on Friday night. Bill Schmidt is with us tonight from 97.3 The Game. He's also an assistant football coach at Arrowhead. So you have enough going on this time of year. How big is playoff football for these kids that you coach and for the kids you're going against? Oh, man, it is just the best, Tim. When the weather gets cold. That's when we always wanted to go and grab a pair of sweatpants and a sweatshirt, right? And go play out in the backyard. Uh -huh. That's what it is on Friday Night Lights. You get to still walk down the hallway with your jersey on. Everybody's waiting, asking who you play. We had the meeting uh, yesterday, watched the bracket get revealed and figure out where we're going. Going to be a tough one. We get Maguana go again. Classic 8 uh, stand up. I saw a Classic 8 team right there on the graphic. Good work, Waukesha West. Uh, get yourself on there and Maybe see you down in Madison, but we got a lot of work to do. For Love that. hearing the passion come out about that and about sports tonight on the Fox 6 Sports Blitz. Stick around. We're back to take a look at the week ahead. All right, pretty good sports week coming up. Packers are at the Broncos. I'll be in Denver for that. Badgers at Illinois. Bucks with two preseason games to wrap it up. They're at the Thunder and at the Grizzlies. Bill Schmidt, what's most intriguing on that list for you? Mine is the Wisconsin Badgers taking on the Fighting Illini. Not only Brett Bielema's team, but also Jim Leonard's yeah. team now, senior defensive assistant. I'm most excited to see Badgers and Illini down there in Champaign. And, of course, high school football playoffs getting going. Bill Schmidt from 97.3 The Game in here tonight. Uh, Brandon Cruz, Lily Zah will be back next week. I will be, too. We appreciate you coming back. We hope we'll see you again next Sunday night.